Hello everybody, today we're going to continue our build on our mobile coop. Uh, it's like taking little little bites at a time as we get the opportunity to work on it. Uh, doing a couple projects here and there, getting to a certain spot and of course get called off on some other projects. Such is the life of the homesteader, right? But um, I started uh, the other day putting together the nesting boxes. So let's jump to that footage and see what's going on there. And then we'll show you what's next. So the plan with the nesting boxes back here, I've got eight milk crates. And we're gonna do two rows of milk crates, four across the bottom, four across the top, so that when we open up the door, uh, you can reach in and obviously grab the eggs from all eight egg cartons. So what I need to do is build a shelf, and I've started with my framing here, framing out a shelf that's the proper size compared to the milk crates and will allow us to have bottom access and top access, load bearing, all of that type of load bearing as far as the nest go, not for the structure, but be able to handle those milk crates. So just framing out that right now, I've actually got a piece of, uh, walk with me real quick over here. So here's a piece of poplar that I used when I was, I do what I call zeroing the scale, where I wanna get my cant started and, and start cutting specific thicknesses so this is a this was a cutaway piece throwaway and I usually just put that on pile so it's it's about a half inch thick decently dry hasn't split so I may use that for uh, the top shelf just to be some support there that as you're pulling the nesting box out it doesn't you know, tip down and fall in type of thing so this will add that support like a shelf top and uh, not be a lot of weight either So we got our nesting boxes shelves built. That thing's got a massive gangster lean to it, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so uh, shelves built. And I haven't opened up all my milk cartons, of course. But everything's going to work quite nicely here. Decided not to go ahead and put that thin board here for a platform. I don't, I don't think we need it. And I like the idea that these actually kind of lock in place because the back drops down into that board. If I put that shelf on there, then it wouldn't have that ability to lock in there. So um, we're going to leave that as is. Let's make sure not that I take up too much space that I couldn't get too wide. So there we go. So really the last thing I need to do for the nesting boxes is just make a kind of a perch here. So uh, anybody that wants to get on the second floor, they can come up and make sure one's not occupied. So I'm just going to take a uh, piece of poplar and we're going to just attach it across the spanner here. And that way, grab it. No oh, crate. That way, if somebody wants to come up and lay an egg here, We've got a board going all the way across. So they can hop up, check it out, step right in, be good to go. Now, I don't mess with coming in and closing my nesting boxes in the evening. Uh, just never done that. Again, with this coop, we're not even going to shut them up at night. The electric poultry netting all the way around the structure is going to provide that security. So I don't, I've never, even down here in the greenhouse, the door is wide open, but it's the poultry netting that uh, provides uh, security from the predators at night. So we'll do the same here. Okay, so with these nesting box uh, structures built, then I can get eight of these milk crates here. And when I have the door closed, they won't be able to fall out. So that's why I didn't mess with putting that uh, uh, flat board across. Even if they hit really bad bumps, they're not gonna fall down on top of one another. So they should stay in place. I discussed in previous episodes of putting a drop down gate on this. And as I started to draw that out, I realized if it's me, or, or especially if it's Kelly, you know, this is this is almost three feet. Well, this is about, I think it's about 30 inches high. So a 30 inch drop gate, you're gonna be standing back here, reaching to get eggs. I like the idea of having a little table there that you could put your, your egg basket on and some other things if you wanted to uh, 
put some more messy material in or do something. So I like the idea of having a little table there to put things on. It's just going to be way too big and you're always going to be reaching over it. So we're going to do double swing here. Uh, I've got a piece of plywood that we're going to rip down and just hinge mount on the corners and it'll just swing out on both sides there. So you could open it up like a barn door and be able to reach in and grab it. That way you're not leaning over something. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I ripped down a couple pieces of plywood here. Let me get that sun out of there. I don't think that's possible, actually. Ripped down a couple strips of plywood, it's the same thickness of my doors, and I'm going to attach those here to the sides to make up you know, an even jam that the uh, hinges will be able to mount clearly. <laughs> I got this piece of plywood. P plywood is you know a gazillion dollars a sheet right now. And uh, with my grandmother's recent passing, we were cleaning out the house and they had, uh, I guess grandpa probably, goodness, 40 years ago, put a piece of plywood between their mattress and their box springs. It's kind of the old school way you, you firm up your mattress. And so when we were breaking down the, the bedroom, we found this piece of plywood and they're like, my goodness, this is the most expensive thing in the bedroom right now. <laughs> so, so I brought it home, but man, I guess where it's been uh, nestled between two mattresses for 40 years, it drew up moisture being on my trailer. And that thing is curled up like a, like a potato chip. So we'll see if we can uh, play to these curves and get some of these uh, straightened back out without having a crazy looking door. Okay, um, side note, when you're building a mobile chicken coop on wheels and you're trying to balance it really well for weight distri distribution, don't forget to chalk the wheels when you're working on it. Otherwise, a little nudge and she goes over the hill. <laughs> Fortunately, my fence post stopped it. That could have been a lot worse than it was, but we still got to fish it out. So let's uh, <laughs> let's get the winch, dummy. I think we'll move it up to some level ground. It's a brilliant idea.
All right, so we got some working doors in play here. I'll rip that one off the hinge as the wind grabs it. So uh, the plywood's got a little bit of bow, but I, I made the bow um, be this way. So when the center comes together, I'm going to put a overlap board and then just kind of put like a hasp type latch so we can latch it down and hopefully that'll draw some of the curve out of it. Okay, so I've got this piece of pine trim on there. It was actually a piece of tongue and groove pine that my father-in-law gave me when he remodeled his house. His basement was just covered in all this. And since I never throw anything away, as you can tell by looking at the place, then we had it. I even was able to cut the tongue and the groove off of it, but left a little bit of the bevel on there just for some nice finish, you know, because we want it to look sexy. If there's one thing Red Tool House is around here, that's sexy. So put that in place and it's, of course, it's pretty obvious how, how well that straightened out that curve. So when that closes and forces against the other half, then we're in good shape. And the more I look at that, the more uh, typical hasp, these little folding gate, that's not going to be nearly as effective because it's not going to hold it tight. So comment below what you think a good latch for that would be. As I trim this out, I could put one of the old school, uh, like the old Johnny houses, just a piece of wood that's on a single pivot screw that you turn and lock it into place. Or I could use one of those bolt latches like you see on, uh, oh my goodness, you know, doors, cellars, I always think of them on cellars. Um, problem with that, of course, is as this wood contracts and expands, sometimes getting that little pin to go in that slot, you know, sometimes on a super hot day or super cold day, you can't get them to line up. So sometimes those are a little confounding. But comment below what you think would be a good latch system for that, knowing that the plan is to have this one lock in place and hold the other one tight. And we can do something from the top or the bottom there. So we're getting to the point where this trailer is starting to become a little bit more than I want to just keep lifting over and over again to put on the hitch. So all I need to do is blow out my back for something stupid as that. So I went ahead, I got on eTrailer.com, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I was in the past when we did our big utility trailer rebuild, but really been impressed with them just on everything. Uh, so got on their website to see what they had, and man, they had a great deal. I don't know if it's still active. I'll post the link. Um, but they had this 1,500-pound capacity swivel jack with dual casters, which is way overkill for this thing. But they had this on sale for $45. It was normally like 100 plus, And they had it on sale for 45 So I jumped all over that, got it shipped in. So I'm thinking we'll go ahead and put it on there. The reason why I wanted a swivel jack, of course, is something that I could just swing out of the way and transport since I'm just doing, since my trailer's all made out of wood and it's just a single beam for the tongue there. I wanted something I could swivel up out of the way. And I wanted to go obviously with a caster just in case I needed to move it around a little bit. And that was what was on sale. But it, this one's made to handle uh, a beam as tall as four inches, which is exactly what my beam is. So let's see how it bolts up. So it appears some assembly is required. <laughs> okay, so I've got it in place and tested out. Get the caster out. Works exactly the way it's supposed to. The thing is, the bolts that uh, came with it were just uh, about a quarter of an inch too short. The, the span this way was correct, but the depth, because this is just two nominal two by fours uh, screwed together, then it made it, the 
made the plate wider than the bolts were. So I had to go with some carriage bolts, which my carriage bolts that I had in stock uh, are about an inch and a half too long. So I need to go up to the house and get my deep well sockets so I can tighten this down. And then I'm going to take the uh, hacksaw or reciprocating saw and cut those bolts off um, because that's just, that's just begging to hit me in the shins. And I bang the meat off my legs enough. I don't need something else to do the same. So we're going to, we're going to jack it up right here and we're not going to roll it over the hill this time and run up and get that so we can uh, clean this up a little bit. All right, so I got the jack working really well, mounted, tightened down, bolts cut off so I can tighten it down. Those carriage bolts, of course, in those little slots, um, I may have to come back and tighten them up a little bit as they kind of wallow out those slots and, and make a round hole, a square hole, is what it is. But uh, I think that's where we're going to stop this evening. It's time to feed the pigs and feed this pig. Back the trailer up. We're not going to put it over the hill again this time. We'll park it here against the workshop so we can uh, work on it again. The next step will be putting our side panels on and making some roost bars inside. Well, all right, take care everybody. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.